Okay, in this little tutorial, we're going to build just a couple of simple CSS buttons. And these buttons are gonna have all the effects done with CSS. And we're gonna add a little bit of animation on some hover states, as well as a few variants of these buttons. So you can see here that HTML is fairly simple. I've just got four simple anchor tags here. And each of these anchor tags share the class of button. We're going to use that class for our base styling for all of our buttons and then we'll add some variations uh, of these button sets on different class names. So let's go ahead and jump over here to our style sheet which is right now blank and we'll just do a little bit of boilerplate code here to uh, change the body. So let's go ahead and give this a background and we're going to set this to the color of 373939. And let's just give next a little bit of padding of 50 pixels. Okay, so you can kind of see over here the preview, it's a little bit dark right now. So why don't we just, for the sake here, go ahead and give these guys some color as well. So we can actually see that button text while we're coding along here. And we're just gonna go 404040 and call that good. Okay, so what we want to do next, you can see these links are all purple. The reason why they're purple by default is because we actually don't have an anchor. Uh, so, so they're kind of showing as if they were already visited. So that's kind of why those guys are purple there. Okay, next let's go ahead and say dot button. Remember, this is the main class for our, our buttons here. And we're going to switch the display to inline dash block for these little guys. And we'll save that. And let's go ahead and set the padding on these. We're gonna set padding uh, to 10 pixels, 25 pixels. That's 10 on the left and right, 25 on the top and bottom. And just so we can see these, we're gonna go ahead and set the outline to one pixel solid red. And this just kind of shows you the dimensions of these buttons as we're sort of fleshing them out so you can kind of see how they look there. Next, let's go ahead and give these guys a bit of, we're going to take off that underline. So let's say text decoration none. That gets rid of the underline on the links. And then let's go ahead and give these guys a color. Let's just make these 111. Now I am following along here with my notes. And these notes are based off of a code pen that I found that it was kind of fancy. So you can check out the link there in the description for the original inspiration on these buttons. I did not create these from scratch. Uh, next, let's go ahead and uh, set our text align. So we're going to set text align to center. That's going to make sure that all of the button text sits right in the middle of our buttons instead of left or right. And then let's go ahead and give these guys a shadow. So we're going to use the text shadow property and it's going to be zero, zero, two pixels, which means zero offset horizontally, zero offset vertically, two pixels of blur. And then it's going to be an RGBA value we're going to use uh 255 comma 255 comma 255 comma one one meaning uh 100 percent opacity so basically that's a white 255 255 255 one so that color is white and next let's go ahead and give this guy a background color so we can now start to see them background color we're going to set to ccc Okay, so now that we have that back color in place, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that outline. That was just a simple placeholder. And now we can sort of see those buttons uh, spaced out there. Okay, let's go ahead and give these guys a bit of a margin just to push them away from one another. So we're gonna say margin dash bottom. And let's just say, I don't know, 25 pixels or something like that, just so they're not all stacked on top of one another. And that looks fine there. Next, let's go ahead and give these guys a uh, background clip. And we're going to set this to the padding box. So that's changing the way the background um, shadows and things that we add in a minute will clip so that they're only bound where the padding is, not where the outside of the borders are. And let's go ahead and give these guys a border. One pixel solid. And... We're, all, we're not going to define the color here. We're just going to do the two values because we're going to define separate colors for our, our each border uh, as we go. So normally you'd say one pixel solid red or something. In fact, I'm just going to illustrate this red 
that would give all sides a red border. But if we omit that, then I'm able to specify the sides of the border color in a separate property. So that's what we're gonna do here, border color. And I'm gonna declare this in three values. So the first value is gonna be 202020. And you can see that right now that's applying to all sides. But when I add the second one, 1A1A1A, and save that. It's kind of hard to see that because they're so close in color, but this one's a little bit different. And then the third one here is 111. So you can see there, now our border is specified into three separate ones. And we're going to go ahead and set a border radius as well, because we're going to kind of round the corner slightly. And that's going to be two pixels. And it's a little bit tricky to see what that did, but it just barely rounded those corners right there. Now that's going to be customizable for us so we can go with less or more or 100% round, but that's what that border radius is doing for us right there. Okay, and then we're going to give this guy a background image and we're going to be using a gradient. So instead of an actual JPEG or something. So we're going to call this guy a linear, whoops, if I can spell that right, linear gradient. And the linear gradient is going to be like so. So the actual syntax is two, and then you can say bottom. So this specifies uh, where the gradient goes and then the two linear colors of the gradient. So when I save here, you can see it's going from this color to this color uh, from top to bottom. So there is the little gradient on the buttons. And then we're going to add one more property here, which is gonna be a box shadow property. And this shadow is going to be an inset. Most of the times you see box shadow, it's used on the outside of the box to give like a drop shadow. But when you're using the box shadow, you can actually specify, whoops, I need to add a semicolon there. You can actually specify the keyword inset and that will apply the shadow to the inner area of the box. So here we're gonna say zero, one pixel, RGBA again. So we're gonna do this one as white, 255, 255, 255, and the it's gonna be 0 0.09. So 9% essentially is what that kind of means, opacity. And we're gonna say comma. So we're gonna add multiple shadow here, one more shadow. This one's gonna be zero, uh, one pixel, one pixel, and RGBA. This one's gonna be a black shadow, zero, zero, zero point two like so and save okay so we have two shadows one of them is an inset shadow on the inside the other one is just a regular shadow which is happening on the outside and again these are pretty subtle so they're a little bit tricky to see but if we zoom in here and i invalid watch kind of right down here as i invalidate this line over here so I'm going to try to move over here to the front. Oh, shoot, this isn't going to work. So I'll just chop that out. And you can see that the shadow disappeared. If I undo and save, you can see that little teeny tiny shadow appeared right down there. So it's a subtle shadow, but it just is right behind there. And the same thing with the inset shadow. On the inside, it's really subtle. Okay, so that's the base style for our buttons. And the second thing we have to do is go ahead and add in our various states. So let's start off with our hover state. So next we're gonna just gonna say, whoops, dot button. We'll do the pseudo selector here of hover. And let's go ahead and add a few of these. So we're gonna change the background color to AAA, whoops, AAA. And we'll save that. So now when we hover over these, we should uh, see that background color change and I'm not seeing that change yet. Oh, we have our gradient that's sitting in front of the background color. So uh, we need to go ahead and add that. So this is the background and it is the linear gradient. Same thing here to bottom, except we're going to do different colors. So it's going to be CCC and 555 five, five, like so. All right, now we should be able to test out this hover state on these buttons. So come over here and you can see definitely they slightly change gradient when we hover over those buttons. So that's looking good.
Okay, and next let's go ahead and add the active state. So the active pseudo selector here, which is colon active. And we're going to do this one as a group selector, also button dot active, so that we'll be able to add that active class name on any button that we want to have be our current button as well. So here, let's go ahead and set the background color. Kind of just the same thing we did before, except just different colors. So this one's going to be B4, uh, 2F32. Okay, and the uh, orders are going to be slightly different here. So we're going to say border color, and they are going to be colors C1. Whoops, actually that's wrong. Sorry. Reading my notes backwards here. 1C1C1C. 20200. 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, and 222. Two, two. All right, now we can't see the active state. So let's go ahead and give one of these HTML elements the actual active state so we can see it change. So we're going to jump over here to our HTML. Let's come over here to, I don't know, this middle one, and we'll just give it this class of active. That way it's going to inherit these styles um, that we're doing here. So there's our border colors. And next we're going to change our shadows. Right now our buttons look like they're coming out at us. We're going to make it look so the selected state look like it's, looks like it's pushed in or inset. So to do that, we're just going to sort of reverse some of the colors on our box shadow property. So let's go ahead and add the box shadow property here. And this one, the first color here is going to be, we'll change our inset shadow first. It's going to be 0, 2 pixels, 4 pixels. And we're going to do an RGBA here. And it's going to be the black color. We're going to set it to be point three okay comma and then we'll set our second shadow here which is the outset shadow it's going to be zero pixels or zero one pixel and we're going to set the rgba value here and we'll set this one to the white except instead of 100 percent opacity it's going to be 0 0.09 so nine percent opacity and then now you can see on this middle button how those shadows sort of reversed here. So now it looks like it's kind of sitting in instead of coming out at us for that active button. All right, so that looks pretty good there. I'm just going to shrink this down just a hair because our CSS is getting a little bit wide there. So now let's go ahead and add a couple of uh, variants, I suppose, of these buttons. So let's do a full rounded button. So let's come down here and I'm just going to hit return so I pull this code up towards the middle and we'll give a class of rounded. And for the rounded class, it's going to be fairly simple. It's going to be border radius of 100%. And we just set it like that. Now, if I come over here to my HTML, let's, I don't know, give this bottom one here a class of rounded. You can kind of see what the, uh, what the rounded does. It makes it completely round like so. So maybe we only want the left and right or, you know, depending on how you want your, your button to behave. You can see that when I pull the browser window over a little bit wider, that's kind of what it looks like. So it will change shape depending on if that line breaks happens or not. So we can force these words right here to not have a line break. We can actually do that with our HTML or in CSS. Uh, but if we move over to our HTML, we can come in between these words and add a non-breaking space. So ampersand NBSP semicolon that's exactly what this is for so that that will never break depending on the width of the browser so that's kind of how that looks there with the border uh, set to 100 percent now you could also in your css you could also do um, m's or something like that this is going to behave a little bit different because with an m you're going to get uh, only, sort of, I call this the pill button. But if you have 100%, that's going to make all your borders sort of behave like a circle, if you will. And if you do uh, M's values, then it's going to only apply sort of as the button stretches, it's going to be looking like a pill box. So I'm going to set that to the M value instead of the percent. And that's easy enough. That's how we do the, uh, the rounded version. 
So let's just do another color variant. We're going to do a dark version instead of a light version here. So on this HTML one, let's do this one right here. Sure. Else, we're going to call this one dark. So then we're going to come over to our style and we'll add one more class here called dark. And on this element here, let's just give it a few different colors. So we're going to override the color to be BBB and we're going to override the text shadow. And this text shadow is going to be zero, zero, two pixels. Whoops. And we'll go with our RGBA again. And this one's going to be 0.7 instead of 0.2, so black. And we'll set our background color to 474747. Four, four, OK, you can kind of see those colors start to change there. And next, we're going to mess around with the background gradient. So that's going to be set on the background image. And we'll set that to our linear gradient. And the syntax here is going to be two bottom comma. And the colors are two A, two A, two A comma. And second color, one B, one B, one B. And there we go. So there's our dark variant of our button. So the last thing we have to do is just finish off the hover state and of this dark button. So let's go ahead and do that one. So we'll say dot dark colon hover. And we'll give this guy a background color of three, six, three, six, three, six. And the background image, we're going to change the linear gradient um, to a slightly different color here. And two bottom colors for this are going to be four zero four zero four zero, and two a, two a, two a, and whoops, and save. Okay, so now when we come over here and we hover over our dark variant, you can see it has a slightly different hover state. So you can see we have here all of our states now complete. We have our regular button. We have a rounded button. They have their states. We have a selected or active button. Then we have a dark variant of the button as well. So the last thing, we'll just add a simple uh, transition to add a little bit of animation when we hover over these buttons. So let's come up in here to our general hover state for our button. And we are going to set the transform property to scale. And we're just going to maybe do like, I don't know, 1.2%. Uh, and we need to come up here to our regular button now and just say transition. And we'll say we're going to do the transform property. And it's going to be at 0.5 seconds. So let's save that and refresh here. So now you can see that I just have a simple little animation when I hover over all these buttons via that transition property. One thing to note that's interesting, we can't actually transition the hover color because our color has been it has been done with a CSS gradient on our buttons. That property is actually not a transitional property. So we can't have those two light and dark hover state gradients transition between one another. That's something that does not work. There are quite a few hacks and workarounds to sort of make it look like it works, but the actual transition of CSS gradients is not supported in all the browsers. So I hope you liked that little quick tutorial uh, on designing up a couple of CSS buttons. Go ahead and shoot me any questions or comments you might have, and we will see you in the next one.